Welcome to Word Connect with Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, a teaching ministry where believers are trained to be established in the truth of God's Word. For more information and free downloads, please visit www.thepastormax.ng. Highways and byways. Highways and byways. God's soul winning agenda. As we look at our world and we look at life, the, the pursuit of man. Yesterday I was, after the conference, the pastor's conference, I was going home and uh, my wife sent me a message about someone we served together and the person passed on so I had to check quickly and I discovered that the person has passed on and the first question I ask myself is what about all the pursuits all the energy to make something out of life and if we're not careful our pursuits will be without eternal consequences the reason is because we have not yet understood and believed the words of Jesus, what he said about life. And so even some of us that are born again, we, we feel like we're missing out something in the world. It, it's almost like salvation has deprived us of enjoyment. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's like if I was not born again, I know what I'll be smoking by now. <laughs> I drink a little, but if I was not born again, I know what my mates are mixing. And you almost feel sad that you are a child of God. And it is because many of us came to church just to solve our problems. That's what brought us to God. We did not come to God because we felt that we needed a savior. I, are you following what I'm saying? We didn't come to God because you, you feel, oh, I'm under the weight of my sin and I needed someone to... No, you came to God because they told you if you are finding it difficult to uh, give birth to a child, come to God, God will help you. If you're finding it difficult to have a job, come to God, God will help you. If you're finding it difficult to see, come to God. And so we, we rush to God because he had the solutions to our problem but not the salvations for our sins. And so by the time those problems were solved, we realized that he was not useful in our lives anymore. But why did Jesus come? Let's look at Luke chapter 12 and verse 15. Luke chapter 12 and verse 15. Sometimes you see the quarrels in churches. You see the fights in churches. And you ask yourself, why the fight? Why the struggle? And do you know the reason we fight ourselves in churches and we, we, it's like one after the other is because we have built our whole life just in the positions we can acquire in church. And so, uh, this person is a deacon. I, I was here before, he be, before the church started. In fact, I was a member of the church before the church started. <laughs> I should be the deacon. I should be the men's leader. And you know the reason why? The easiest way to kill any army. Are you listening to me? Come on, I said, are you listening to me? The easiest way to kill any army is to make them fight against themselves. Praise God. I've been to Rwanda several times. And one of the I went to the Genocide Museum in Kigali. And as you go through the Genocide Museum, there are several places. You see pictures of when people died. And there's, there is a place where you actually see the skulls of people who are dead and they did, where they cut them. Well, I couldn't go there uh, for obvious reasons. If I see that skull, it's going to be on my mind for a very long time. But I realized that the people who were killing themselves were not strangers. They were brothers. 
but something got inside of them to the extent where they hated their own brothers are, are you following what i'm saying so a particular person from this tribe marries a, a woman from the other tribe and when that war started it was the husband that killed the wife are, are, are you following what i'm saying and in how many days thousands of people were dead what an external army could never achieve or could have achieved in that nation was achieved in a negative sense in a couple of days because they set themselves against each other and that's one big problem we have in the body of christ that's one big problem we have in our local churches instead of reaching out to the sinners we're busy occupying ourselves with several positions and fighting ourselves and losing track of the mission that christ has sent us look at how jesus defines life he says jesus was speaking to them look at this go to verse 13 he says jesus was teaching in a church service then one from the crowd said to him teacher now you thought that this person came to church and was listening to what jesus was preaching the guy had that was no why he came he says, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Imagine Jesus teaching. <laughs> and a man raises his hands. And everybody will think, well, the man wants to ask a question. Or the man is getting blessed. You know, some people raise their hands. And you think, man, this guy is getting blessed. Or some people close their eyes. And you think, man, this guy is thinking deeply. Or what pastor is preaching. And the man is just thinking. Between the okra soup and obono soup, when I go home, what am I going to eat? Praise God. Well, some people are shaking their heads. Saying, man, the message is touching my husband. And the man is just thinking, ha! Ah, man, that naira bet I played, I lost. I mean, you shouldn't be betting if you're here. If you, if you listen to me anytime and you play naira bet, you will never win. It's a curse that I carry with me and I release everywhere I preach. You will never win. Your money will keep going and going. Say amen. Everybody say amen. amen. All the ones that are keeping quiet now, we need to look at them now. Everybody say amen. amen. Do you know what the word amen means? Let it be so. Okay, so you know you'll never win again for the rest of your life in Jesus' name. All right, verse 14. That's the weakest place I get amen in church. But it's okay. But he said to him, Man, who had made me a judge or an arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take heed what does the word take heed means be careful be careful and beware of covetousness for once life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses do we believe the words of jesus look at our life today it is all built on what we can possess how do we rate people today what they possess how do we rate churches today what they possess how do we rate pastors today what they possess the very thing jesus warned us of is the very thing we kill ourselves for he says beware be careful that what you have does not define your life even though God wants to bless us even though God wants to prosper us even though God wants to increase us that is not why Jesus came even when Adam had sinned he was still not very poor even Cain with a curse in his life still went ahead and built a city can I tell you something that you have everything you need right now doesn't mean that your life is well pleasing to God that you have a car doesn't mean that you're walking righteously that you have money to take care of your family that you have a job does not mean that your life is pleasing to god there's something higher than life that's the way man rates that's not the way god rates because sometimes un unknowingly to us we try to prove to other people that we are walking by faith and doing stuff because we have things and jesus says that's not how i rate life Why is it that people are not committed to the things of God? 
because of the things they possess I want to challenge you this morning to see something higher live for a higher cause praise God live for a higher cause live for a higher cause live for a higher cause go to Colossians 3 2 Colossians 3 verse 2 set your mind on things above set your mind if, if the Bible says set your mind it means that you have, you have your will you, you, you have to will to do it you have to consciously set your mind on things above not on things on the earth set your mind on things above it means that be affectionate about the things of the spirit you know today I, I, I look at um, some of our generation and our young generation and uh, I'm amazed at where our mind is on and you know the funny things some of the people we knew that were pursuing all of these things when we were younger they are still pursuing them till today they still don't have it one day uh, a man met me we were talking one of my friends and he said you travel too much you are always traveling is it not head thick <laughs> and I laughed and I said to him have you watched all those people who do multi-level marketing he said yes I said do you know how they travel how they go everywhere trying to sell their products he said yes I said for why are they doing that he said so they can live a comfortable life I said I travel the way I do so people can have eternal life if you can be motivated in the natural to live that way you know a couple of days ago I had to sit my kids down son is 10 and my daughter is 5 and I had to explain to them that traveling is part of my assignment I, it's part of my job especially my daughter I had to explain to her that listen when I travel I'm also going to work <laughs> praise God Is it stressful on the body? It is. But we are compelled by a higher reason that men may come into the knowledge of the truth. And every one of us seated here this morning, God wants us to make that our focal aim in life. Look at our society. Look at the destruction in our society. <laughs> look at how far we have gone today you can be married to a man and from the day you get married you are afraid that the man will not be faithful that's how low we have fallen you have turned yourself to an inspector general of police checking phones, checking whatsapp checking shoe, checking pocket checking, look at the burden we have placed on ourselves and yet we think we are a wise generation Someone will promise you, I'll do this for you. He will not keep his word. In fact, when I was coming, I, most times I hardly use public transport when I'm coming. When I'm coming, I sometimes get a car to bring me. But because of our camp meeting and all that, I decided to enter a public transport. I told my wife, this is one of the reasons I don't get into public transport. In that motto, we were seven of us. Right? In the Saina. We're seven. We just pray that God should guide us. Blood sucking demon out of the way. God should lead us home safely. We've done all those prayers. We've said amen. As we're driving, they called one guy. I mean, they called one guy. Where are you? The man said he's in the hospital. As, well, as he's speaking. Ah, he's in the hospital. As well. I said, okay. They called another guy. The guy said, ah, that he's in the junction, two junction close. The man that called him, two junction close to where he is. You know, and they caught like four people, all lies. And I ask myself, yet, I believe this morning, 
they are in church somewhere what is wrong with us how did we get to this level that we lie without a conscience and some of you do it here listening to me especially those people who they give jobs you know the job is not ready he said i'm on it i finished it and unfortunately they bring a young man to learn under you and you train that man in lies you train him how to lie how to deceive customers look at our society today and we are the first to say oh god oh god bless me so people will know that i'm god no values why because we have defined life by what we possess all those lies is so we can have more people we can have more money see people going to jobs with different names so when you ask them what is your name they say which which of the which of the name do you want because that one person is answering many names just to get a job and when you ask him he will tell you so what will a man do so the, the man for what to eat what to drink what to wear is ready to break the laws of god without thinking that he will stand before God and give account of himself. And you ask yourself, where has all our struggles taken us to? Yet, the money, you don't still have it. Today, even if you have the money, you're afraid of kidnappers. Afraid of robbers. Afraid of rapists. Are you following what I'm saying? don't we think there is something wrong with our society that we only have the solution but how can we have the solution when we envy them they are the people we envy they are the people we want to be like they are the people we want to share testimony to be like and so we distort the very purpose with which Christ came Set your mind on things above. When last did you consciously preach the gospel to someone? You can't because they will laugh at you. Because the, the, the guy you are trying to preach to, he was the one that called the last girl for you. So how do you preach to him? That's a problem. The man you are supposed to preach to the work he gave you three years ago, you have not delivered it. That's why when you tell people, let's go out for outreach, it's not that they don't want to go. They cannot go. Because by the time they enter the streets, realize that they can't preach anymore. Say, what did you come with? Say, we, we, we came to collect flowers from people. They can't preach. Why? Because the gospel has not even changed them. And saints, I tell you something. God will hold us accountable for the evils in our generation. Because we are the ones that perpetuate it. A governor would rig an election. And a church will open up his house for the governor to do thanksgiving. Just because you want to finish a building project. What a shame. What a shame. Set your mind on things above. Take your eyes from this earth realm. Don't live for these mundane things. Live for something higher. When I was coming this morning, oh, something just broke my heart. It's coming out from the hotel. <laughs> and I saw a young girl who came in. She was supposed to pay the tricycle I entered. She didn't have the money. She went inside, wanted to get the money. She didn't have the money. She came out, said he was going to transfer the money to the guy. I said, how much? She said, 300. I said, oh, it's fine. I'll pay for you. But what broke my heart? I mean, this girl, beautifully dressed. She had no bra on. 
That's how she dressed from wherever she is, from her house, down there. And in her mind, she's enjoying life. You see how we have gotten to the place where the more naked we are, the more we think that we are current. If we could see your breast, then we know that you are, you are, you are a 2019 baby. Open your lap a little. If we can just sight something small, we know you are happening. These are our mothers. And we wonder why our society is the way it is. Don't forget that your own children are growing up in this society. You know, sometimes we live as if we are the last generation. We're not. I mean, I bless you guys giving birth to children. I bless you, you guys have faith. I mean, I'm telling you, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't, have, I don't have a problem if I give birth to a child. I'll be able to take care of the child. You know my greatest problem? How do I teach this child to be conformed to the image of Christ? If I have five of them, I have five responsibilities. That's work. That's my greatest challenge. You don't give birth to a child one day and the guy just came out, come and say, well, I, I'm a man, but I'm thinking I'm a woman. Hey, are you drunk? Hey, you, are you following what I'm saying? See, we can laugh away these things. We can say, God forbid, but that's where our society is heading because of the depravity of the human soul. And that's what Jesus came to change. But this gospel will not mean anything to others if it doesn't mean something to us. If we're not different from them, we cannot tell them to come. What would they come for? Every day I pray that God help me to see the world for what it really is. Praise God. Are you still here? Look at what Yahoo boys are doing all over the place. Going into rituals. These are people given birth to by parents. And they did naming ceremony. Most of them, they did dedication. And thanks given on their head. Look at those. Havoc in the society. What is their hope? Their hope is not money. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Their hope is not, let's, say, let's give them jobs. No, that's not their hope. What makes a young believer who doesn't have a job, what makes him not to engage in that act? There is something restraining him from evil. That's what their hope is. You think if a man has money, he will not steal? Go and ask your governor. You will ask yourself, why would a governor steal? Go to your general. You know, that's one of the reasons you believe in divine health. Because you think if you get to these hospitals, they will, they will combine to kill you. No light, no drugs, no, no, no whatever. They need to get you healed. Why? Because one man somewhere who has even all the money has decided that what will take to take care of the masses, he will use it to send his own child abroad. So you think his problem is because there's no money that's not his problem I, I, are you following what i'm saying so the solution to our problems as a nation as a world is not more jobs you know why because the reason why there are no jobs in the first place are because people who should create these jobs have decided that collecting the money is bigger than creating jobs and some of them are dickens in our churches some of them are pastors. And funny enough, those are our role models. So until we change our mind, <laughs> there's nothing like being persecuted for righteousness sake anymore. We're not suffering persecution. I think Andrew Omar said something that if some of us were convicted as Christians, there would not be enough evidence to arrest us. 
There will not be enough evidence. When last did you take out time to study God's word? Because you want, you know, the funny thing is that when we see a sinner, you know, I, I want to do a full message on that. It, it struck me, I was studying the book of Acts. The Bible says when Paul went into Athens and saw the idolatry, he was troubled in his spirit. When you walk around and you see drinking bars, are you troubled or you are excited about where you will hide in the night? So I see one bar there, a bar is not very open. Just tell your wife, I'm coming. I want to go and collect money. Bah! Come there, two bottles. Just maintain yourself. Come. You just come. And your wife say, Ah, yeah, no. You say, No, no. I just want to sleep. So sleep. Now take time to meditate. You think you are wise. You have forgotten that whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. You now realize one day you went there. And you told your wife you were going to see Mr. John. Police came and arrested everybody there. And they asked your wife, ah, your husband said, no, he's with John. They think that you are somebody, you are in the cell. Meanwhile, they are beating you. Your lies have caught up with you. You know, we almost look like we can do what we want in life and get away with it. I realize something. Every deception of the enemy in our lives is making us to lose something. Whether we realize it or not. When Eve bought into the deception of Satan, they lost the garden. She did. You do know. You realize something. Satan did not tell Eve, "You will become like God and lose the garden." He didn't add that. The enemy will never give you the complete picture of the depravity of sin. He'll never tell you. He'll never tell you. Are you following what I'm saying? The devil will never tell you incomplete. That this action will destroy your home, he will never tell you. That this action will destroy your life, he will never tell you. We know you've been blessed by this telecast. To become a partner, please call plus 234-805-888-7575. The Maxwell's messages are available in over a dozen books and a thousand audio and video formats. To purchase this title and other titles by Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, please call plus 234-805-888-7575 or send us an email, office at pastormax.ng. Also available are free downloads from www.thepastormax.ng. God bless you.